Now, see, the very first United States Code annotated and then Constitution of United States. And see, they have to uh, do process of law, and that's what people have to understand. If you go into Angela Stark's uh, uh, talk show and go to the Rod Class audio uh, about two-thirds of the way through or so, there's a guy that comes on and tries to help Rod in uh, the endeavor and trying to tell him not to go in and try and tell the court things or demand certain things, just ask them to show the law. Put the onus upon them. They're the ones that are supposed to know the law, and basically you get them to hang themselves. The problem was Rod and several of these other people, they ain't going to hear that. They're going to get bull, try and bull their stuff through and not see that basically they're wrong and this other person might be right in the endeavor. But, I mean, how how long do you keep beating your head against the wall before you say, hey, that hurts? I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not moving that wall. It's about time I go and try and find a door to get on the other side of the wall. I don't know how many people you got on here, Tom. Uh, let me take a look. I got the, I got the file up there, and we've got about twelve. I'm pulling the file up for me here now. This is a stopple. Got it. Okay. One of the other things you need to do is uh, you also need to uh, check into your state uh, being tax exempt. When we got our uh, individual banker's EIN, we went in and identified ourselves as a non-tax uh, exempt organization, uh, non-profit tax exempt organization. So now you can go in and basically uh, go in and basically get the uh, tax exempt, sales tax exempt uh, status from the Secretary of State if your state has sales tax. Does anybody out there have any questions on what we tried to cover Sunday night or anything? Oh, hey, Sunday's call was really good, and uh, I don't have any questions. I see that the new file just showed up, Thomas, the case estoppel. Yes. I'm downloading it. Due process prohibits applying collateral estoppel to one who has never appeared in prior action. Under the doctrine of collateral estoppel, if party has been accorded full and fair opportunity to litigate issue in prior proceedings, due process is not validated by denying party further opportunity to litigate the same issue in subsequent proceedings.
when the party relying upon collateral or estoppel welds it as shield or as sword, due process forbids that the opponent be collaterally stopped if he did not have a chance to litigate the issue in a prior action. They're coming in under collateral estoppels in all regards under a criminal uh, court case or even in some of these civil cases like mortgages. You have to come in with your higher collateral estoppel, which is your collateral or your estoppel by deed. And then you put that into the court case, and basically, if you've got an existing court case, there should be no charge for you to file that into that court case. If the clerk of the court is for char trying to charge you or anything, you basically notify the prosecuting attorney in the process if it's a state uh, action. Because you have the right to basically defend yourself, and by putting that paperwork into that court case, that is part of your defense action. You have to know what you're doing when you go into these clerks of the courts. You don't argue anything. You are not a sovereign, so don't utilize that term sovereign. Be careful while you're driving on a, in a vehicle that is still registered with the state. The state has a claim against it. You have to turn around and do an estoppel by deed over that vehicle and then get that on file with the Secretary of State or the Department of Transportation and also go after the MSO, which is being held at the Federal Reserve Bank that services that state. Otherwise, you keep a low profile until you totally get out of the system. You don't need to go be sitting in jail over a minor item out here while we've got the resolve to shut the whole thing down. Supposedly, they put up part of that movie uh, that uh, on YouTube or something. I haven't seen it, but basically one person was telling me it. they thought they had saw it up there on YouTube. Uh, Jupiter Ascending, to where basically she has to go through all the government agencies, and basically the key thing was to get her tax identification number to be able to get her title and her inheritance. And that's what we needed to do. We needed to get our proper uh, tax identification number, which is our individual banker's EIN number, and make our individual banker the CFO of our private bank. an unincorporated, non-profit organization. An organization is just an organ that has a bunch of different parts. Heart, liver, lungs, arms, feet, whatever. So you have basically your uh, checking and savings account. You have other assets out here that you have to bring in. Driver's license, certificate of title to your vehicle, title to your property, 
fishing license, hunting license, all these different instruments out here that basically have been utilizing our collateral, our assets, under a letters of credit that were granted to them, and that was basically under the auspice of our foreign grantor trust person. And then they owe us the rent because they are, we are the landlord, we came from the land, and we're standing over the land, so we are the landlord over our inheritance. They are the renter. They owe us the rent. They're leasing our assets. All these different terms fit into the scenario. They're controlling a guarantor that is obligated to pay the item. What we have to do, our chief financial officer now, has to issue back to them when we get a negative or a positive bill, in their world, debt is positive, we have to issue them a negative credit to cancel out the debt. We can't give them a positive credit because a positive can't cancel out a positive. It's got to be a negative. Take a look at some of your statements that you have. If you've got a good accounting uh, system or a normal accounting item, like I had one for an oil company, I went in and deposited $3,000. They put it down as a negative $3,000. Well, that's credit that I put on file. So my credit is negative. Their charges are positive. I have to release, or basically they automatically took it out and released the credits out of what I had on file with them to set off the debts, the positive charges that they had. So right now I've got a negative 800 and some odd credits remaining. But it's negative in their books, on their side of the, in their corporate structure world, that is the other set of accounting books. That's the hidden accounting book that you don't see. You're looking at basically the fraudulent one that's out in front there trying to make your credits appear as being positive. And the debt as being negative. No, the true accounting is debt is positive in their world and the credits are negative. That's why you have to do a negative a bill and do a endorsement with a negative release of your credits to do a set off. Okay, anybody have any questions on this? No, I understood it. So we we should be putting negative on our coupon draws. Yes. But yeah, tax bills or whatever you get, those are a positive. Those are a debt. Right. And the debt is owed basically to us. So, and see, all taxes have to come back to the source. Okay? We are the source. But if you go in and you give them a positive, 
and they're giving you a positive, you haven't canceled any debt whatsoever. Therefore, the taxes can't go back to the source. Well, should we be doing our 1099-As with negative numbers, too? Very possibly. You have to think about this. What are you wanting to accomplish? If you're doing a set-off for a bill, you have to give a negative uh, credit to that company. Okay. Think about it. Okay? This is not... Uh, calculus. Well, this is 101. One and one equals two. A positive one and a negative one equals zero. All right. Okay. I mean, that's, that's almost kindergarten. Now, can I, I'm planning to put my estoppel in against an old traffic case I had have here, because that's the only case I have around here. Have you settled that traffic case? Yeah, it was 10, 15 years Well, then old. forget it. Okay. You've got more other important shit to get taken care of. Well, that would, that would put it on record. No, I, I, I'm not doing it to settle the case at all, just to get it on record. You've got utility bills at the present time. Okay. You want to do something? Do something that's in the present time. Okay. Forget the past. The past is in the past. Okay? And basically when you come out of this stuff, a lot of that past action is either going to go completely away or basically they will settle it at that point in time if need be. Okay. Stop worrying about the nickels and dimes. If you're going after a five hundred billion dollar or a five hundred million dollar gold back bond. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to lose focus on what you're trying to do. Well, I wasn't thinking of doing this in, in terms of getting any money, but it's just a way to get around the county recorder by filing it in a court case. Let's see, that's comment. a totally different item. That is not your estoppel by deed for your living person. Okay. I said Sunday night. Basically, if you're having problems, go and get it notarized. Then take it to the court and put one into them, okay? Okay. We've had bankruptcy court actions. If nothing else, go to the bankruptcy court. Yep, mine's in Nebraska, but I guess I could do that. Well, we've gone to several things, several courts here, since you've been back there in Ohio, okay? Yeah. If that don't work, then take it after you get it notarized and send it up to the Secretary of State and get it at the steel. Okay. There's other alternatives out here. Go down and talk to the county attorney and ask them what to do. Okay. Hell, he's supposed to be working for the people, okay, of the state. He's wearing two hats. Yep. He's working for the corporation, and he's also supposed to be there for the people of the county. Utilize him in that capacity. Okay. Because if it doesn't get filed, and see, basically, that's what a lot of these uh, county recorders and stuff are. They're relying upon the county attorney 
to say yay or nay on whether that gets filed. So you get the county attorney involved up front and say, why can't I have this filed? Where's the law that says this can't be filed? Not, I want this filed. Where's the law that says I can't do it? Does anybody have any problem with that? Yeah, I've been to the county district attorney. I called them twice. I told you I tried to submit papers at a clerk's window number four. They told me to take it to court. I took it to court. They wouldn't take it and threw it back at me, and half of it landed on the floor. I called the DA about that, too, and they didn't want to talk about it. They're totally, they, they just said they have nothing then to do with what goes on in court. Then you go to the attorney general yeah. and say, basically, I cannot get this filed into the state right. or into the county records. What is going on here? This should be a into a court action. Put a complaint in as a customer to the state of California. But there was one guy out there in California that's already got this done, and he told you what you have to do. Yeah, you guys are talking about doing an estoppel by deed at the Federal Reserve Bank. No. He got his to the system. I don't know if he's still on the call here or not tonight, but basically he told you, go back and listen to the audios a couple times back. Okay, because that, whatever, a couple times back was about a five-minute call, and after that no, it was a good call. No, keep going back. couple is more than two. Okay, okay. I'll go back. I'll listen to him. Yeah, I remember that call. It, he uh, briefly he mentioned it. He followed all the uh, requirements, and he got it through. And he, uh, I remember he shared it. I don't know how many calls it back, though, but he did share that with everybody. I did get the green card from the estoppel by deed recorded at the county land records. That went through, but I didn't get a copy sent to me or the Federal Reserve Bank that I know of that I was supposed to receive copies and they didn't You're, stamp it. They're not going to send it. You're going. Did you get the original back? No. I just okay. got a green card. That's it. Okay. It's still sitting there. You have to follow up and go down there and find out, did they get that recorded? Right. Okay. See, they were supposed to send the original back to you. They can't send, and basically I tried to explain that on the calls there after I submitted that in, that you can't, they're not going to send those to the Secretary of State or to the Federal Reserve Bank. You have to go in and get certified copies from them. Now, after they've recorded it, mm -hmm. you pay for those certified copies, and that's probably... There's something down there that basically you have to, they're waiting for you to come in and finish the payment on it. All right, I'll check and see if I have to make pay, more payments or something. Yes. That might be the it. The onus is up upon you to follow up, okay? Don't blame it all on them. It's your responsibility. Right. I'll call them up and ask if they yeah. require more money or how do I get a certified copy or where's my original? Yeah. Right. Now, that certificate of live birth, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the guys out there, uh, I'm not going to say anything more than that, because <laughs> I don't think he wants me to let out who, who it is right now. But anyway, he was doing his credit cards. He got his individual banker's EIN. And he called up, and basically he tried to do uh, an endorsement back to them. All well, they basically sent back, and uh, we're try still trying to get him to make payment. Uh, so he called him up and said, well, that person's dead. That's what they told him. He said, he is. So then he quickly thought, well, I'm the executor over that. 
And they said, well, we need to see a death certificate. Well, you've got a death certificate. All certificates are death certificates. They're dead. A certificate is for the dead, not for the living. That certificate of live birth does not say a living entity, does it? It says a live birth. But what does birth stand for? Birth stands for separation or abandonment. So the tissue, okay, the umbilical cord was a living umbilical cord that you separated from your mother. You separated from her. You also left the birth sac, which was a living tissue, because it was supplying life to you while you were in the womb. But that certificate of live birth has a uh, last name on it. You're not dead. So who is dead? The birth sac is dead. Your mere image, your altered person, because it's a shroud of terrain, just like what was wrapped over Jesus, the mere image of his self. See, people badmouth the Roman Catholic Church. But a lot of the stuff that is in the Roman Catholic Church, people don't even understand. They're telling you certain things right there. The shroud, the birth sac. So, that certificate of live birth is really a death certificate. Now, that credit card company that this guy was working with, they wanted to see a death certificate. So, I told him to call them back up and ask them, uh, do they need a certified copy of it, or can they just uh, have a copy sent to them? Now, when you do that, okay... You do not send the certificate of live birth that has the registration number on it. That reg the one that has the registration number on it is for your private usage. Your private usage. In the past, we've been sending too many of these certificates of live birth out to different organizations because we thought that they were really in the du jour. They're not. They're in the corporate structure. That's why we've gotten some of these certificates back from some of these entities out here, is because they were not to have that. That is for our private records, the one that has the number on it. And basically, if you check out, you go into the Secretary of State's office or that Bureau of Vital Statistics or even to the county, and on the form, when you request that certificate of live birth, it asks you what it is being utilized for. And you say, well, I need several certified copies that do not have that registration number because that's your letter, that's your royal letters patent number. That is your inheritance account in the United States of America. That's your entitlement account number. See, a lot of this probably would have come a little further if people would have 
sat down here and opened up their mouth a little more and tried to communicate back and forth like people normally did in school when you were assigned to work at a uh, table with two or three other people, a study group. It wasn't supposed to be just one person doing all the work. It was supposed to be a group effort. I never established this thing to be a solely Patrick Divine go out and bust your ass for everybody else group. It was supposed to be a working group. Input was supposed to come back from you people. There has been some good input back from a few people, but very, very few. And it's not only on this group, but basically it was also on the 1099A and the 1099OID groups that I had. You don't go into these things and basically just sit there with your hand out, okay? That's fully addressed in the parables that Jesus put out. Like the one guy that went to the wedding reception and was running around with his plate wanting it to be filled up. And he didn't even come to the wedding dressed properly. That's the way a lot of you people are. You're not properly dressed. You haven't done your share of the research, of the understanding, of the support. You don't have to do the whole research or anything like that, but you need to supply a little effort into the process. You have to show that you really are alive. Because if you can't show that we are alive, okay, or you are alive, how in the hell are you going to expect to show the Federal Reserve that you are alive and that you're entitled to your inheritance that the Federal Reserve is holding there, the Treasury and the Federal Reserve, okay? It's not the Federal Reserve banks, but it's the Treasury, the du jour government Treasury agents that are sitting in the Reserve, Federal Reserve Bank, there in Philadelphia, that are holding your assets, holding, controlling your safety deposit box. If you can't show that you're alive out here on a simple little call, how are you going to prove to them that you are alive? All certificates, all certificates, all licenses, they're for the dead. The living don't need certificates or licenses out here. Because the living has substance. The living knows who they are. Only your dead persons have to show that they are that they have a death certificate, a driver's license, a picture ID. Who is that for? That is for a dead entity, a dead person. You, as the living, are a people. You're not a person. That picture on that driver's license, how long ago was that? Well, that time span is dead. It's way past. You had the picture taken six months ago. So that's a dead picture. It's not living. 
You've grown longer hair. You've grown a beard. You got glasses now. You changed in the living form compared to that dead picture. I don't know how I can make things any more simple than that. So everything out here is really a death certificate. But you've been thinking that it's a living certificate. It's for you. It's not. You are a people. All the constitutions call out, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union or to establish a state government. We bring forth, or we set up this constitution for the state of Iowa government or the United States of America government. We are a poor. We're not an other. The United States, the Constitution of the United States is a company charter for the corporate United States. So it's a derivative of the corporate United States setting up a United States company. Because it was derived of the other. But we set forth our marching orders for the government as a people. And then we retained certain rights and powers and did not give those to the government. But you have to understand how to properly go about it. You do not fight them in this regard. You had to get your uh, tax, proper tax identification number, because everything out here is about banking. Everything. So you had to become a banker, a private banker. Just like in the movie Jupiter Ascending, she had to get her proper tax identification number. Then she could claim her inheritance. Now we've got our individual banker who is now going to be our chief financial officer of our bank. But we as the people, the living we only have a first name, so we can't be out there. We have to have our chief financial officer, our fictionary person, go out there and operate the bank for us. It's like you go down to Walmart, and everybody that's going to be working at Walmart has to be named Tom Jones. Okay, so you've got a hundred employees there all named Tom Jones. Is there a problem there? No. Because they all have different identification numbers. They're all doing a different function in the store. No problem. That's what we've got, too. I've got a whole bunch of different Patrick Divines out here. They're all operating under different numbers and different functions. That's basically what that Gaius, Institute of Gaius, about the persons was talking about. And that was written, what, 300 uh, years before Christ came on the scene. All of this stuff is about banking. You just have to get out there and become a private banker. And then you put your title in, your estoppel by deed, over your assets. 
and you have stopped them in the court because all they're doing is trying to come in. And what does a cop do when he pulls you over? He is doing an estoppel against you because the state has a claim, has an estoppel claim over the collateral of that car and over the collateral that your fictionary person, your name that is on the driver's license, you have a fully paid up fidelity whole life policy there. So what are they doing when they stop you for speeding or stop you for having no seatbelt? They don't want you to die. Because if you die, then basically they can't utilize that collateral any longer because it now it moves over to a different category. That's how simple it is. But when you come in with the superior title over that, just like I've got on my I've got the manufacturer's title, so the state has no claim over my car. And I've got my estoppel basically over my uh, social security person and basically uh, everything else. So basically I've got them estopped in all regards. But in the meantime, until you get this stuff, try and lay low. Don't try and go out there and fight uh, with your driver's license or anything else trying to do some of the stuff that I've gotten away with because I'm in a little different scenario anyway. I can handle myself in a lot of this regards because I know a lot of things that basically you guys basically just haven't had the time or uh, the experience to understand properly. And I've done my time in jail. So, you want to learn? You might have to do your time in jail. But don't come crying to me. If people would stop going out there and being so bullheaded, and take the time to stop and smell the roses and start loving themselves a little more, they might learn something. But if you run around with a chip on your shoulder, someone's going to knock it off, and they might knock your head off with it. Now, any questions, comments, whatever? Yeah, I really like this um, this document you just put up today. Almost every paragraph applies to what happens to me. It says, due process prohibits applying collateral estoppel to one who has never appeared in prior action. Well, I have appeared in a prior action in 2013, our our remedy then was to do countermands or counter claims, which I did, but not in the negative dollar amounts. But even in that case in 2013, they never said what the judgment was or anything like that. They just send me a bill like, you know, a year later or something. They send you a bill like you owed it, and they didn't even recognize your countermands and everything. No hearing, yeah. no nothing. And then down underneath it says the same things. If you're denied due process and they take your property, um, unless in exigent circumstances it is con con constitutional for governments to seize real property in civil forfeiture action without giving owner notice and opportunity to be heard before seizure. Uh -huh. And then it says, although property subject to forfeiture may be seized prior to notice and hearing, government may not permanently deprive owner of that property without notice and opportunity to appearing at some hearing. 
once risk of removal, concealment, or destruction of property is obviated, due process requires notice of the hearing before temporary deprivation is extended or converted into permanent deprivation. Well, that's what they've done to me. They, I try to give yes, them my paperwork. Is what you have to do is you have to go in and put a, an estoppel by deed in against that automobile, right. in against that driver's license, mm-hmm. not against your certificate of life birth. Right. You've got to go against the action that is in process. Mm-hmm. Okay? You can't play football on a baseball field. Right. Okay? But we did the other thing first, so that it would sort of shut everything down, but I didn't do. I left some baggage in the room there. Yeah. See, you've got an ongoing court case. You have to deal with that court case and do the estoppel by deed against them in that process and then send that into the Attorney General's office, uh, the Department of Transportation, and basically uh, uh, the county prosecutor or county, whoever sold that deal, and mm-hmm. basically turn around and file a charge against them. Right. Grand theft. Turn around and file the charges down at the sheriff's office. Right. And also, you know, like no due process. When I asked to go see a magistrate at the traffic stop, they go, we book people into jail that want to go see a judge. Well, they just mm-hmm. denied due process. They just lost um, jurisdiction. Well, they didn't have any right to arrest you, period, okay? Right, right. Because, see, so who they, who were they arresting? They were arresting you because you basically were claiming to be the fiction. They were only arresting the fiction. No, I never claimed to be in a fiction because I never had a license. But you did, anything. you did, but you didn't know how you were doing it, okay? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I know what I have to do, so I'll, I'll be, yeah, be writing see, letters everywhere. Yeah, and see, that's where you have to have your estoppel by deed that you are, as the living, are the title owner of that driver's license person. But there again, you were not driving. Right. You were transporting yourself, and you have a right as a people. You are a people, not a person. Right. And you have the right of transportation. Now there's a couple of. Uh, Transportation calls. I think uh, the second to last call, or maybe it was the last call that Angela Stark had, that uh, this one guy was talking about driving without a driver's license. But yet he turned around and went back in and got a uh, license or a title to his vehicle or whatever just to uh, prevent the hassle because he did not have all the rest of the story, the estoppel by deed, and basically his individual banker's proper tax identification number to come in and have the authority to be exempt in the process. Right. Yeah, he's got some damn good information. All right, I'll check it out. Do you... Do you Oh, I'll, I'll look up. I, I don't remember. It's three nine nine zero four or something, isn't it? Her uh, talk show. Her Angela uh, Stark's talk show. Uh, I can't remember. I'll look I'll it up. What it is. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll find it. I'm pretty sure that's it. I've been on. Yeah, I can't remember what what it's called. Uh, I'm sure there's somebody in the in the Skype group there that knows it. Excuse me, Patrick. So yeah. you use the estoppel. You don't do the estoppel on the birth certificate, or you, present, you don't present the birth certificate with estoppel. And is, am I correct to assume that the 1099A, we do it in the negative, as much as the 1099C is done in the negative when you send it in, right? No. Okay. We are basically doing a payment okay, of credits to set off the debt that they're sending us with the bill. So we have to borrow the credits from our fiction person 
to transfer them over to the other party in the process. Okay. See, we can borrow, process them as the borrower to make a payment to a third party. See, I I posted these items up here about uh, payments, endorsement payments. What a couple months back or so, about making a payment to a third party. Yeah. You can I either have it sent to you or basically to a third party. Party, yes, like the ba- I know a payment that you owe to the bank or else. I do remember that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Patrick. Okay. Anybody got any more questions? I guess the cap's got everybody's tongue. So let's kill the cat. Yeah, now one woman basically called me up this morning. Basically, she was down at the car dealership, and uh, she had all the stuff ready to go to drive the vehicle off the site. But what they want? They want proof of insurance. And I told her, hey, you don't need it. You, They're going to give you the MSO. You're not asking for uh, any... Uh, car dealership license plate for 30 days on the vehicle, you're going to take and maybe do a uh, process if required to go down and file that title with the Secretary of State or with the Treasurer, whoever, Department of Transportation. You'll be paying the taxes down there. You just tell them that. Say, well, basically I've got to have the vehicle to be able to go get the insurance, if nothing else. I've got to be able to drive to the insurance company. That's where I'm headed from here. And then just go home. Because you don't need insurance. The only reason that the state requires you to have insurance on that automobile is because you have to insure their assurances that they have out here. But if they don't have any assurance on that vehicle, you don't have to have that insurance. And then once you understand this, that you better have this pretty well in hand before you go and do this process, unless you're in a dire strait to need the vehicle or whatever, but then you keep a low profile and you better have that uh, estoppel by deed over your certificate of live birth on you at all times out here. And you better be having most of the stuff ready to go to the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay? Uh, Because you've got to be able, if you get into and you do not get into an accident, you've got to know which words to use. You're not a driver. You do not get into an accident. You might get into a fender bender, but you're not in an accident. You're in an action that basically is an act of God. And in an act of God, the government has no control over right or wrong in that scenario. Because in most cases, two gods tried to be in the same place at one time. It's an impossibility. You have stated that several times. And each god is responsible for their own shit. That is a motor carriage or something along that ride. 
but it's not a commercial vehicle. You're not doing commerce. So basically, therefore, the state still has no jurisdiction over that vehicle. You're not for hire. You're not charging anybody that's riding in that vehicle. You do not have passengers. You have guests in your vehicle. And see, you've got to know the words that basically the cop or whoever tries to stop you is going to try and trick you into. You say the wrong word and you just cut your head off. You give consent to them and you cut your head off. Now you became a dead man. And they're going to treat you like a dead man and throw you into the morgue there at the county jail, the slab. And I know, I've been there twice. And the last time, for shits and grin from their side, they threw me into a drop tank which is the worst hole in the whole damn jail. That's the barf pit. Barf pit. <laughs> That's too bad. Now, they come in and basically they hose that that fell down. You got a hole in the middle of the floor to piss and shit. Barf, whatever you want to do. Mexico. That sounds like yeah. Mexico or India. No, it's the United States of America at the county. See, people don't know that. This is sitting right here in our own damn country. You get treated worse than those damn people that were down there in uh, uh, Guatemala or uh, uh, Gitmo. Than those Al-Qaeda. And you think you're here in America? Shit, no. You're here in a corporate Morgue, because they only deal with the dead. Okay, any questions, comments, rebuttals? None whatsoever. I have to leave you this call, and I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody is, else? Is there anything particular I should... Um, Make sure I do when I refer to my certificate of title, when I do the estoppel by deed on the certificate of title is, or the license. I just have to refer to the number and... and and. Uh, well, you have to come in and basically you have to refer that basically this is basically now under the jurisdiction, under the fiduciary control of your chief financial officer and that you are the living and that your chief financial officer is one of your private bank employees. Okay. And he now has to, uh, superior jurisdiction over that title. Okay. Now, think about it, what you want to say. Watch that movie. Oh, I did. I watched Jupiter Ascending. That was good. Yeah. I, had to, I was so curious. I had to download it and check it out. I actually watched it twice. And see, some of that was also uh, referenced in that Interstate 60. Mm-hmm. Some yeah, of these the movies that you are, have. Huh? The Wachowski, you know, the people that produced it or directed it, they really are on a mission. If they did the Matrix trilogies and they're doing this, they mm-hmm. really are trying to wake the people up. Yeah, the people are. And even cartoons. Basically, somebody... Told me uh, another stuff, something about uh, 
uh, the cartoons, Meshach, uh, Bendigo, or whatever uh, uh, scenario, uh, in uh, using of the names, okay? See, there were four people in Babylon. They were individuals. Yeah. They did not do it as a group. They did it on an individual basis. They stood their ground as individuals. That's the only way you can do this and come out of the system as an individual. You can't do it in a group effort. You go in and basically operate in a group area and basically try and get certain benefits out of it doing something in a group. You're either signing over something into the group. It's just like you've joined another religious group, a cult. And you're going to get burned. Right. They call it the group trap. Yeah. You're going to get burned eventually. I hope you're listening to this, Tom. So the watch out. We're 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 both listening to you. Thank you. Go ahead. What? Yes, we're both listening very clearly. Thank you. Yeah, and that stuff out of that area overseas, basically, you stay the hell away from that. Eventually, that will have enough people, and basically then they will go after that and wipe that whole thing down. How many times have we seen this in the past? Too many. And yeah, the innocent, you... the innocent are the ones that really get burned out of the deal. What man? Not, not the ones that are sitting in the background that are not available. Hell, go and ask Wesley Snipes. Go and ask some of these boxers and stuff that basically they allowed somebody else to control their assets for them while they're getting their head beat in, and then only to find out they didn't have shit. How many of these people that have won the lottery? They thought that they were uh, protecting all their assets, putting it over here in a protected area. No. Basically, they got shysters to come in, and the good guys ain't going to appear. The shysters will be there, and they'll sell you a song and dance that sounds so good that you will buy right into it. Hook, line, and sinker. Stay away from I totally recommend that. I've been down too many of these rabbit trails with penny stocks and different things out here. Only to get burned. But I was in a position that I could get burned and I didn't give a shit. Because I was in a position that I could turn around and go make more and get burned again. You might say, in a way, I was sort of like a masochist. I liked it. I didn't love myself enough at that point in time. And unless you take control of yourself, you do not love yourself, really. When you try and let somebody else do all your responsibilities for you, you're not loving yourself. Now, that is not saying that basically in a marriage or something, But there again, you've got to have a true love relationship in that marriage and a return, and you will constantly be checking that on a daily basis 
in that process. And that's why the movie uh, Longest Ride is a good love story to find that out. That tells a lot right there in that damn movie. Yeah, and coaches always build up your confidence and your assurances and make you feel like you're undefeatable and all that. If you have, you know, good positive input and positive feedback and then you're motivated, you're undefeatable. But the world drags you down and tries to create anxiety so you don't, you give up. It's like, it's called the matatoid syndrome. Right. They just keep banging on you until you give up. You will run in cycles, positive and negative, okay? Good harmonics and bad harmonics. Mm-hmm. You need to know when to lay low when you're in a bad harmonic. You need to go know to go full force when you are in a good harmonic. Risk it all. When you're feeling great. But know when to get the hell out. I'm not totally recommending that, but basically that's the way the chips fall. When you are in a good harmonics, you can do nothing wrong. You are in an aura that basically is got everything else being blocked from harming you. But you have to know how to control that aura and know when the aura feels like it is starting to weaken. Okay, no other questions. Call tonight, Tom. Okay, all right, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. You're the best. We love you, Patrick. Another good call. Good night. Good one tonight. Thank you. Sweet Thank you, Patrick. Thank you.